Eric Magidson here with Central Oregon Community College. This is Lab 9 working with printers for CIS 279W7 Windows 7 configuration. In this lab we're using the virtual environment again and I'm using the NYC CLA machine. So the first thing it has us do is log in as administrator and as you can see I'm already logged in as administrator. At this point we're going to go add a printer. It takes us the long way around just so we can see where that is but we could just go into devices and printers. But We'll go ahead and quickly go to control panel as the instructions say. We'll go into hardware and sound and devices and printers. So once we're in devices and printers we're going to go ahead and add a local printer i.e. the reason that it won't automatically install because local printers LPT ports are not plug and play. So we're going to add a printer. We're going to change this to LPT2. We're going to say next it's going to retrieve the default drivers that are installed with our operating system by default. We're going to do HP. We're going to come down to where we find the HP LaserJet 5200. There it is. PCL5 driver. Remember we talked about the difference between PCL5 and PCL6 drivers. So there it is right there, PCL5. And I'm going to say next. It's going to ask me to give it a printer name and in the text it wants us to call this HP LJ5200. We're going to say next. It's going to install the printer. I'll pause while it does this. At this point the book is asking us to say do not share this printer. We're going to go back in and share the printer. So at this point it would be a local printer connected to just this computer. We're going to go back in like I said and share it. So we'll say next. At this point we can click finish and our printer shows up. So there's our printer. Uh, you're asked to take a screenshot and then we'll continue on with exercise 9.2 sharing the printer. So in the devices here we're going to right click there are two properties here. There's properties and printer properties. So we want to go into printer properties. We're going to go to the sharing tab and we're going to share the printer. And by default it's going to pick the name that we gave to the printer. So this is you know, a pretty acceptable share name. Of course if we're in a large company we want, might want to indicate something like where it is, you know, room something within our share name, make it easier to find in the directory. Okay, but they're not going to have us listed in the directory. So we're going to share the printer. It, we're going to leave the uh, render box. We're going to say OK. We're going to leave this open. But now that printer is shared. So moving on to 9.3 in the devices and printers control panel that we have open <clears throat> excuse me we're gonna again select printer properties this time we're going to change who has rights to do what on the printer so we're back at printer properties we're gonna go into the advanced tab and set it to where what is the time that the printer is available so remember if this is a color printer we might want to limit it to just business hours sort of encouraging folks not to print their personal stuff so we're gonna to go to available from and we're gonna say that the, it is available from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. there's a couple other settings they want us to do they want us to choose start printing after last page is spooled so we're gonna wait till we spool the whole thing before we start printing we're gonna hold mismatched documents you can read about that on your own and we're gonna say apply so at this point we've just applied a limitation to when the printer is available and of course this is going to apply to the whole group now let's go into groups so we're gonna go in to the security tab we're going to see that there's that every run group and so everyone currently is allowed to print. We're going to remove that. We're going to add another group from the Contoso domain. It's the domain users group. Again I like to check the name, watch it come up, say OK. There's the domain users group. So once that's highlighted we're going to make sure that only the print checkbox so here's domain users group. Here it is. Only the print checkbox is applied. So I'm going to say apply. 
At this point, we're going to go down to the administrators group and just look at those settings, making sure that the administrators group, anyone in that group, has the right to print, manage this printer, and manage documents, which we do. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and it'll close the printer properties sheet. So now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to actually pool two printers together by creating a new printer object for the same HP 5200 printer that's connected to the LPT port. So the way we do this is go up and add a printer, add a local printer, again the same port LPT, we choose next, we come down to HP, if you notice by default there's the HP LaserJet 5200 and we're going to choose next. We're going to use the driver that's currently installed, always a good idea say next and here this printer name is going to be HP LJ 5200-2 so this is the second printer in our pool I'm gonna say next and it's going to install the printer now at this point the book says to share it the way we did in 9.2 but we can bypass that by just coming down here and saying share this printer so that others can see it here it is HP 5200 jet at we could put in a location you know um, this is the multiple printers on the production floor so just making that up printer is associated with pool so pool of printers we'll say next we could set this as the default printer, which is fine. We'll say print, uh, finish, sorry. And if you notice, this changed because I left that as the default printer. Now, if I wanted the original 5200 to be the default, notice I don't get a second printer here because these are associated with one device. So I can right click here, okay? I can go into printer properties, and if you notice, here's the printer properties for both so I can pick printer properties for the 5200 and come back if I wanted to and make this the default printer so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that so we're gonna open the property sheet for the 5200 dash 2 printer properties it's gonna bring up that printer property sheet that we've worked with before we're gonna go to the advanced tab and it says uh, make sure the always available option is selected, which it is, and change the value of the priority spin box from 1 to 99. So this one's going to have the 99 priority. Okay, I'll just type that in. At that point, we've changed priority for the printer. We can choose apply. And again, we want to remember that since this is a pool, we got to have those same permissions for the entire pool. Notice because we created a new printer, it's given the everyone group. We would remove the everyone group. The um, book at this point just has us remove the everyone group. It has us make sure administrators have full rights, etc. Uh, but there's certainly one more step we want to do, and that would be to add the domain users. Because again, domain users need to be able to print to both printers in the pool. So we can say, OK, there's domain users. Um, and basically at this point, we've made sure everything is the same for both. We can go ahead and say, OK, to close the printer properties for both. And we are essentially done with the lab. So we've created a local printer on LPT port 2. And then we've assigned an additional uh, printer to it, you know, the, pr the hardware device so that we pool two together so that it'll print. We know it'll print to the first one, priority one, then the second one, priority 99, and that way we're set. So if there's no questions, which you can't answer through this video, but remember you can certainly email me. Communication is key. Enjoy the rest of your day and have a great one.